All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section. We got some reference triangles. If you couldn't tell by that pretty amazing picture, check out all those reference books. What are they making? That's right, a reference triangle. Pretty amazing. All right, let's get this going here. Uh, let's take a look at these uh, sine function right here. So I've got some different angles here, and we can type them in the calculator. I just want to take a look and say, hey, what is the sine of 30? And double check my mode, make sure that I am in degrees. That's cool. So I'm going to say, what is the sine of 30? Boom. I get 0.5. Interesting. So that's 0.5. So I want to compare that to what is the sine of 150 and 210. So let's do the sine of 150. Oh, look at that. It's 0.5. What do you think the sine of 210 is? 0.5, but it's negative. And then what was that last one there? It is the sine of 330. Any wild guesses what this bad boy is going to be? That's right. We get negative 0.5. So why is that? Why do these all have the same thing? That's what this whole section is about here, is why do these all have the same ratio, uh, 30, 150, 210, and 330? So let's check it out. We're going to check it out with the Ferris wheel. Everything comes back to this Ferris wheel. Remember, if this is zero degrees over here, <coughs> This first one right here looks like it's a 30 degree angle. So that is a 30 degree angle. Well, what's interesting about that? Check out this. This would be 150 then. So if this is 150 over here. So this is 150, 150 degrees. Well, what do you notice? Well, what does it make with this flat line here, with this straight line here? What angle is this? That's right. It's 30 degrees because straight across is 180. So it's 30 less than. Interesting. Well, what's 210? Well, it's this one right here. Well, what's unique about 210? It's 30 past 180. Aha, interesting, interesting. And then what do you think about 330? It's this one over here. Well, guess what? It's 30 degrees below the 360. Remember, this is zero degrees or 360 degrees. So this is 330 degrees. So what do they have in common here? They're all 30 degrees away from like the x-axis here. Awesome, pretty cool. So that's called a reference angle. So what is a reference angle? Jot this down. It's just how far are you from the x-axis or how many degrees are you from the x-axis. So if I give you something like 160, what is its reference angle? So you're going to have to draw 160. So it's going to be somewhere over here in the second quadrant. So I know this from here to here is 160. So what's the leftover chunk? How far from the x-axis is it? It's 20 degrees. So the reference angle of 160 is 20. How about 240? So let's draw this bad boy. So we got to get good at knowing, you know, straight up is 90 degrees. Straight across is 180. This is 270. So they're, each one is 90 degrees here. And then back to 360. So we start at zero. So we're going to get really, really good at those. I'm looking at 240. What is 240? It's somewhere down here. So this one's kind of tricky. How far past 180 did I get to to get to 240? So there's no, like, set rule. You just got to kind of come in here and figure it out. How far past? Well, I'm 60 degrees past 60. Uh, after 180 is that 240. So the reference angle here is 60 degrees. Awesome. How about 310? So if I draw 310, what quadrant? So I'm going to pass that 270 marker. Going all the way around, past that, and I'm somewhere over here in the fourth quadrant. Here's 310. So how far away from that would be from the whole 360? So this other chunk over here looks like what? That would be a 50 degree angle. It's 50 degrees away, 310 to 360 is 50. So that's its reference angle. And then can we do it in the negative direction? Sure, not a problem. I'm just going to go negative 160. So this is negative 90. This is negative 180. This would be negative 270. And then back to negative 360. So if I'm starting here and I'm going to go negative 160, that's about here. So negative 160. Well, how close is that to the negative 180? Well, what was that little chunk in there? What's that little leftover piece? It's just 20 degrees. How far away am I? 20 degrees. So we're just trying to figure out how far from the x-axis are you. Awesome. Let's keep this rolling. All right, so now we're going to up the ante, and we're going to make triangles out of this bad thing. So we're going to look at some reference triangles. And basically, we're going to look at reference angles, and we're going to make a triangle out of it. So if I give you a point, the point here is negative 3, 4. If I give you a point for this angle right here, I don't really care what the angle is. I want to find the sine of this angle. So what we're going to do is instead of just a, a reference angle from here to here, like how far is it, that's going to be our theta. This little chunk here is our theta. We're going to drop perpendicular down, boom, just like that. So what are the sides of this triangle? Well, I went over 3, 
and up four. That's what the point did, over three, up four. Now we're gonna have to find that missing side. So how do you find the missing side of a right triangle? It's just gonna be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And be careful, that was a negative three, but I'm gonna square it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's gonna become positive. So what is my missing side here? This is gonna be nine, three squared is nine, plus four squared is 16, equals c squared. That's 25, so what is c? What number squared is that? It is five. So that's a three, four, five triangle. Now I can find any ratio I want. In this case, I want the sine ratio. So I'm never gonna find that angle. I know you could tell me that angle. You could inverse sine it and tell me the angle. I don't want the angle. I want the sine of that angle. So we're not gonna find it. What's the sine of this angle? Well, I'm gonna do opposite over hypotenuse. So it's gonna be four over five. Awesome, so we're just gonna kinda of draw it in there. How about this, what if I give you the point uh, negative three, negative two? So I'm gonna go over negative three, I'm gonna go down to, I know I'm somewhere down here. So can I draw the reference triangle? So it's again, how far from the x-axis? So I'm gonna draw this, and then I'm gonna drop that perpendicular straight up to the x-axis, always to the x-axis. This is theta right here. So there's like my reference angle, how far from the x-axis. And now I'm gonna label the points. I went over three, and I went down two. So can I find the hypotenuse? Sure, I'm gonna say it's negative three squared. Whoa, what happened there? Let's try that again. Negative three squared plus what? Negative two squared equals that missing side c squared. So I'm really gonna say nine plus four c squared, which gives me 13. Do I know what number squared is 13? Nope, so I'm just gonna square root both sides and say c is the square root 13. Totally cool to have square roots here. Square root of 13. Awesome, so can I find the cosine of that? Definitely, what is the cosine? Well, here's my angle, so who's it? I know radical 13 is the hypotenuse. Who's the adjacent? It's a negative three. So it's gonna be adjacent negative three over the square root of 13. That is the answer, but can we leave square roots in the bottom? Nope, cannot do that. So how do I get rid of it? Just times it by itself, so multiply the bottom by square root of 13, multiply the top by square root of 13, we're looking at negative radical 13 all over 13 because the square root of 13 out of square root of 13 is 13. That's why we did it. That is actually the simplified form. I know it looks worse, but it has no square root of the bottom. We rationalize the denominator. That is the right answer there. So we can draw some reference triangles. Awesome. Let's keep it going then. So here's what it's going to look like here. I'm going to give you the sign of some theta here, some angle. I don't know what that angle is. Don't even care, I don't even wanna find it, but I wanna know what's the cosine value. So we're gonna make reference triangles. So all you gotta do is draw in your little uh, x, y axis. I know I'm in quadrant four, that's cool. And I know this is the sign. So if I draw a reference triangle in this quadrant, it's gonna look like this. Here's theta, it's always that angle, it's that reference angle between the x axis. Always a right angle there. And now we're just gonna plug it in. What is sine? Well, sine is opposite. So what's the opposite? It's five. Over hypotenuse, what's hypotenuse? 13, boom, that's pretty awesome. What about this negative, who's negative? Well, the hypotenuse is never gonna be negative. It can't happen, so in this case, this is the negative five. I went down five. That's why it's in the fourth quadrant, I went down five. So the key is, I need to find this other side so I can find cosine. So again, I'm gonna do a little Pythagorean theorem. Let's just call this side x in this case, so it's really gonna be x squared plus negative five squared equals 13 squared. So this is gonna be x squared plus 25 plus 169. And then can I solve for x? Sure, subtract your 25 from both sides, subtract 25. I'm gonna get x squared equals 144. And then square root both sides, I'm looking at what? x equals 12. So this missing side here is 12. I'm just gonna write right over that x. So it's 12. Now can I find the cosine of it? So I never actually found the angle. But what is the cosine of that angle? Well, the cosine of theta in this case is going to be adjacent 12 over 13. Perfect. There it is right there. That's pretty cool. So that's what we're gonna be doing with these reference triangles. Let's do another one together here. How about this bad boy here? So this time I didn't tell you the quadrant, but I gave you some information. It is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So we're gonna get really good at this. You know, here's your 270. Here's your zero or 360. So I know it's gonna be in the second quadrant here. Let's draw it in there. So I know it's gonna look something like this. You can kind of draw it really however you want, as long as you get the right angle here and you get theta always coming from the origin. Always, always, always start at the origin. So there's my reference angle in the reference triangle. Lots of references. <laughs> Gotta reference that. 
Uh, now we're going to do opposite over hypotenuse again. So I've got 8 over 17. That's opposite of theta. Can I find this missing side? So I don't know if you notice the pattern here, but we had 3, 4, 5. That was the first one. This is a nice, perfect, uh, you won't get square roots in your um, uh, Pythagorean theorem. What was the last one we did? We did 5, the other side was 12, and then 13. So these are called Pythagorean triples. So they're Pythagorean triples. They're just numbers that work out friendly when you do Pythagorean theorem. So you're not going to those like that weird radical 13 we had. So this is one of them. This is the last one. I mean, there's, there's actually a bunch. But these are the most common ones you're going to run into because they're the smallest. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17. So this is a huge shortcut. If you can recognize it, you can say, oh, yeah, if that's 8 hypotenuse 17, this side's got to be 15. If not, no worries. Just do it. Just do 8 squared plus x squared equals 17 squared. You will get 15. So don't freak out if you don't recognize it or if you do it and you get a friendly answer. You're like, oh, yeah, that was a Pythagorean triple. But when you're doing the homework or the practice or whatever you want to call it, uh, you're going to notice this trend coming up that that is actually one of these special ones that works nicely. Awesome. So once I have that, can I find the tangent of theta? Sure. Tangent of theta will be opposite over adjacent. So who's opposite? The 8 is opposite. And who is adjacent? The 15. And I am good to go. That is the ratio uh, of tangent of whatever that angle is. All right, that is it. I think that has to be a record on uh, length of video right there. Amazing. So take your time. Practice these are kind of tricky. I think the best way is get in there and do them. Uh, check your answers to make sure it's going well. Good luck on the metric.